All right. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Blind Spot, where we talk with blind athletes reaching excellence. I am your host, Kyle Kuhn. As always, we are brought to you by the United States Association of Blind Athletes. Whew, guys, we are just cranking out stuff left and right. Paralympics are just around the corner, I think. Uh, I think we're like, what are we, 32, 33 days from opening ceremonies. Um, oh my gosh, we're whew, just, it, it's, it, where did the time go? Where did the time go? Oh man. So, but guys, um, just as always, just a couple of little housekeeping items. Um, as you guys all know by now, it is our 45th anniversary here at USABA. Uh, so keep an eye out uh, for some awesome stuff that we're, we're doing, including our 45 for 45 anniversary series, um, which comes out every Friday where we spotlight, um, uh, you know, major contributors uh, who have really been just so influential in, in USABA history. Uh, I think our episode number 23 of that uh, series is coming up. Uh, tomorrow. So that's super exciting. Um, we also have got our, we're, we're continuing with our 100 Days to Tokyo campaign. Uh, if you want to learn more about that, visit usaba.donordrive.com. Um, and if, uh, as always, if you want to keep up with the latest and greatest that is going on with USABA, make sure to follow us on Facebook, which I'm sure you all are already since. Uh, watching this on Facebook live, <laughs> but uh, also uh, make sure to go over and follow us on Twitter, Instagram, uh, YouTube, and uh, our producer extraordinaire will drop a link to sign up for our email newsletter uh, that goes out uh, once a month or so uh, for you guys to stay uh, up to date on what is going on with the latest and greatest. But I could prattle on all day. You guys don't want to hear me talk. We're here with uh, our first ever repeat guest on the blind spot. Mr. Callahan Young was our second ever guest on the blind spot way back in, whew, whew, shoot, what was it, March, man? And uh, yeah, back, back in March. And since then, uh, a little bit has happened. Um, you got named to your first ever Paralympic team right about a month ago. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, <laughs> talk to us about that. Yeah. So it's been a kind of a crazy whirlwind of a few months because as you were saying, the time has just flown by. We were, and it feels like just last year, the games were getting postponed and now the team got named and uh, we're under four weeks. I think we're like three and a half weeks until we actually leave for the game. So it's, <laughs> it's been a crazy experience. And, um, you know, I've been working to get onto a Paralympic team since I was a little kid and they get finally named has been awesome. It's just such a great honor. And, uh, you know, it gives me goosebumps thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> so t talk to us a little bit about like, where, like, where were you? How did, uh, how did the, the coaches or, you know, the, you know, who, who was the, who were the people that, how, how did they, you know, let you guys know, um, you know, who, who made the team and, you know, talk to us about just the, you know, those, those couple of days and those hours leading up to, uh, up to that, up to that moment when you got named. Well, we had our, uh, we had an international tor uh, tournament in Lithuania in mm -hmm. late May. And okay. then after that, the coaches said that they were going to announce the teams. And so we did it internally. We had the coaches called each of us and said, Hey, you made the team, you know, so you know, we had like the little internal dialogue between us and the coaches and the um, staff. And uh, I felt pretty confident with my play in Lithuania to solidify my spot on the team. Yep. And uh, so, you know, I felt confident I was going to make the team because I was like, you know, I'm, uh, I just feel really good of where I'm at and how I can contribute. So I was just, you know, excited to finally get the final, you're on the team. So yep. that was exhilarating. And then when we did the team announcement here in Fort Wayne, uh, Molly organized a whole big event with like the mayor of Fort Wayne came out and John Register came out and spoke. Yep. Uh, it was awesome. You know, it was, it was fantastic to finally be able to be on that stage and, you know, be able to be good enough at goalball to be on the team. 
That's awesome, man. So, uh, I mean, so you, you get named to the team. Who was the first person that you, uh, that you called to, to let know? Uh, I, I think it's like an obvious thing. My mom, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm a mom of boy for sure, but, um, I, I text both my mom and my dad, but then I called my mom, you know, telling her. So, uh, we were told to keep it internal just for a little bit, yep. but I was, there's no way I'm not telling my mom or my dad. So. Uh, <laughs> ab ab absolutely, man. No, Hey, nothing wrong with being a, uh, nothing wrong with being a mama's boy, man. That's yeah, for, right. that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what is, what is like, I, I mean, like your, your friends and family have just got to be over the moon, but like, what, what is, what has kind of been the, what has kind of been the reaction over the, the last month? You got, you guys have had an insanely busy schedule. Um, you know, what, what is, you know, what's, what's going through your, what's been going through your mind the last, the last month and what's kind of been the reaction of family and, and friends to you getting named to your, your first Paralympic team? Well, my, um, so I was able to go home for the 4th of July weekend. And so mm -hmm. I stayed at home until that following weekend. And my mom actually threw me a, um, uh like a going away party or like a celebration party for tokyo or i just you know it was awesome seeing i have people from uh, my undergraduate at slippery rock university and then there was like my first grade uh tbi and O&M teacher was there so you know it was like it was awesome as everyone came out in support and was just so excited for me and uh you know it was uh it was just awesome to see everyone my friend tim is like I always joke, he's my number one fan because he, he showed up with a uh, Team USA goal ball shirt on that we're all like, where'd you even get that shirt? <laughs> it's, you know, it was awesome to see everyone and just, you know, the crazy amount of support that I get from everyone. My old, uh, my youth goal ball coach and my old professor and one of my great friends, Wendy Fagan, she's amped. She's sad that she can't make it to uh, the games, but yeah. we're having a big watch party. And so, you know, it's just been awesome, the support that I've been getting from everyone. So, Dude, that's that's awesome. So, I mean, you know, we, we could talk about like the celebration and all that, like, like getting named to the, getting named to the team and all that, but like now, now, now it's time to, to knuckle down and, you know, you know, finish out this, uh, this last, you know, this, this few week grind until we, mm -hmm. until we leave for Tokyo. Um, you're coming off of, um, a pretty intense training camp. Um, why mm -hmm. don't talk, talk to us. Talk us through a little bit what um, what the purpose of, of this past week's training camp was, and and what you guys were doing, and and you know highlight you know give uh, give our viewers you know an idea of of what it's like to really be preparing for the Paralympics. Yeah, so we just came off a five week. It's one of our final prep camps for Tokyo, where we all got together. We got our new uniforms. Um, like our Tokyo uniforms that we just designed and, uh, um, and like we, so our, our coaches, Keith Young and James Wallace based this training camp around our Tokyo schedule. So we, you know, played all the games according to when we would be playing in, uh, Japan. So like, um, if the game started at five 30, you know, we were supposed to be there ready to start warming up at four 30 and we had walk in, like we emulated an entire game every single day. <laughs> which in itself is exhausting because there's um, whenever you're in a big tournament like this, there's so many extracurriculars that you have to be doing. Like um, before each game, they do an announcement of each team. And it's an awesome experience, but it's just so much extra added on to what is a normal. Uh, if you went to like a regional tournament here, we don't do, um, you know, you don't have like the namings of the players. You just hop on the court. Once it's time to play, you play. And so it's very, uh, it's just a little bit different, right? It's a little bit more technical yeah. international. So we, we practiced going through all of that. And it's nice too, because for me, like I, I need food all the time because I'm <laughs> six, seven. So I'm just always trying to consume fuel. And so it's nice because I was able to like jot down some notes. Like, okay, like if I eat breakfast at this time, I need to be able to eat it earlier so I can eat lunch at this time. So that way I'm not hungry for the, um, like the three thirty practice slot. And so, mm -hmm. You know, we did five days. We went through each game. We um, Algeria, Brazil, Lithuania, um, Japan. We went through mm -hmm. each of those teams and had a scout team scouting them out. And so then we were training as if we were playing them and going through the entire process. So, you know, it was an intense five days. And then the fifth day was a um, where we emulated a quarterfinal game. And so okay. 
quarterfinal is like its own realm in goalball in most sports because it's a one and done kind of situation. If you lose it, you're out, but if you win it, you're into the medal rounds and make, you have to go play in the semifinals. So, you know, we put a lot of emphasis on that and really try preparing and organizing our team so we could be in the best situation. Yeah. So, uh, you know, when it comes to a, like a, a quarterfinal round, did you guys, like, did you guys pick a, a specific team um, that you're, that you're, that you think you're going to play in the quarterfinal round? Or uh, do you know, like, do you guys already know who you're, you know, cause like you go through pool play uh, first in Tokyo um, and then does, will that, uh, will that determine who you, you uh, play in the quarterfinals or who, how yeah. did you guys choose um, for that quarterfinal simulation? So the quarterfinal is decided by your, your spot in pool play. So I think one plays four, two plays three, and it's mm-hmm. just crisscrossed against pool A versus pool B. Okay. And um, so, no, we didn't necessarily pick a team that we were playing against. We just, um, the way we set it up is because there's so much variability that could come from that. And so we just ended up playing, um, like we have scouting reports for everyone, but we kind of just had uh, our own lineups where we just played USA versus USA and everyone knew what was on on the line and uh, you know so it was more or less just like an intense final scrimmage that we were playing as a quarterfinal okay gotcha gotcha i mean of uh so you guys you guys simulated you know a bunch of a bunch of matches um did you you know were you specifically always playing on uh were you always playing on team usa or did you uh or did you have to uh, you yourself, did you have to play the, the scout team uh, on occasion? Yeah, so we had preset lineups going into each game uh, just to see different lineups and different mm-hmm. uh, skill sets kind of colliding. And so we were, um, you know, whenever I came out, I'm, I'm a competitive guy, so I want to be on the court all the time. <laughs> so sure. um, anytime I got the chance to go play the, uh, the scout team, I would because – First off, I'm on the court and to play goal ball. I, I love playing the sport, but then also I get to challenge my teammates and um, being the scout team. And I know my skill set. I know what I can offer. And so, um, with that understanding, I can really pick it up as a scout team. So, but the guys we had in for the scout team were awesome. They they did a great job. But it was just a cool. And it's also another thing about the scout team that I really I'm a hands on learner. Yep. And so we can watch film all day, but in my brain, I'm like, man, like how deep are they? What's their, what's their positioning? Like how far mm-hmm. do they dive? Do they shift? Um, it's hard for me to like visualize that. So getting on the court and playing it was awesome because then it kind of solidifies it in my brain. Like, oh, okay, this is where they're at. This is what they do. This is how they move. And so any chance I really got, I wanted to go play because um, it really kind of gives me that concrete information. That's awesome. Uh, kind of switching, kind of switching up gears here a, a little bit, you know, you, you know, I, I mean, this is a, I mean, it's a big games for, mm-hmm. for you. It's, 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 it's very, uh, so like, you don't have anything to compare it to, um, you know, from, from past games. Uh, but like, do you have a, do you have like a, a, Olympic or Paralympic role model that you, that you've kind of looked up to or, or model your, your game after, or just the way you comport yourself, um, you know, going into, going into, you know, your first games. Uh, you know, I, I've never thought about that before. I don't necessarily have a Olympic or Paralympic, uh, role model per se that I kind of base my like professionalism or, um, Mm -hmm. mentality upon, but, um, my co-captain for the team, Tyler, this is his mm-hmm. fourth Paralympics and, yep. you know, he knows what he's coming into and, um, the rest of my team, right. Like they've, uh, Zach Bueller and I, this is a, both of our first Paralympics. And so yeah. the other two thirds of the team, this is not. And so, you know, I, I kind of base around what they say and what they talk about, but Tyler, um, Tyler Marin offers a sense of professionalism and just understanding of like what the games are going to bring, what the experience is going to be like. And so I kind of, I don't know, um, try to base my uh, like professionalism based off of him just because he's a good role model in that sense where he's, you know, I trust what he's talking about. I trust that he knows what uh, was going to happen. Just like the rest of the guys in the team, I'm 
kind of just following their lead. I mean, this is my first major tournament um, yeah. of this caliber. Peru, well, when we went to the Pan Amer- para Pan American Games in Peru, mm-hmm. it was a larger stage where they had the venues built in the, uh, the village, but this just seems significantly bigger. <laughs> so, yeah. I, you know, honestly, for this event, I'm just trying to, anyone that has any information to give me, I am a sponge and I'm soaking it up. So, absolutely, man. Absolutely. So, I, I mean, you know, I, you and I are in a, in a similar boat. Like, we're just kind of, we're like, we're going into this, this Paralympics. We're like, oh, man, I'm just, I'm just ready for the, ready for the experience. Yeah. Um, but like, let's, let's be honest. Like, there's, there's some, you know, uh, there, there's some thoughts in the back of your head. I, I know. I like what, like, what are you most looking forward to um, for this, you know, for these games and, you know, mm-hmm. what are, what are your expectations or what are like, what is going to determine, you know, a successful games for you? Um, well, I mean, a successful games for me is bringing home a medal. So, <laughs> you know, I feel like it sounds self-explanatory, but you know, that's, we've really been putting in the work to get to this point, right? Like we, we had to qualify. That was a uh, process in its own, but then after that, everything was designed around training so that we could bring home a medal from Tokyo, you know, so um, help win that medal count, help be one of the best teams in the world. Like that is our number one objective going to these games, but you know, there's, tons of different things I'm looking forward to. I, on TikTok right now, I see all over the place, people's, you know, going through the village and looking at the, the dorms. And so I'm just excited for the entire process, right? Like um, I've never done the, um, where we get processing, where you get the two duffel bags full of all these really cool clothes from Ralph Lauren, Nike, yeah. Oakley and Omega, you know, just, I've never experienced anything remotely close to that before. And so it's, it's just the whole, um environment with my team will be fantastic experience because i love my team I, i'm excited to be there with them and help ever and be the best team i can be and then just to be part of that with them sounds awesome and then an, another experience is here again there's like i can think of like 30 <laughs> yeah between opening ceremonies closing ceremonies and but um, my girlfriend's actually on the women's team and so i'm excited to experience these games with her uh, to whatever capacity we can, because I know that there's COVID protocols, but, um, you know, to be there, to be able to root her on and support her and be there for her. It's on, I just can't wait for all of that. You know, it's the whole culmination of, <laughs> of everything that I could make a never ending list of the food, which I love food. And there's going to be so many yep. things. We just got the, the map and layout of the village yesterday and I'm amped about that. So it's kind of hard to sum up into one little thing <laughs> for sure for sure man no i mean hey there's there's so much to i mean there's so much to think about take in and you know i, I mean I, it's it's crazy dude it's i mean we're you know like i mean like yeah. i said you're 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 like 33 34 days away from you know your first you know your first uh your, your first match of, of the of yeah. the tournament it's whoo man <laughs> It's, well, the, it's it's real it's here <laughs> so like the, the blessing in disguise about um the covid postponement uh, you know like you can look at the negatives of it but one positive for me was that um my i just finished my graduate program last weekend and so i can go into these games without having any school <laughs> and yeah you know i have 100 percent of my attention which i am thrilled about i i haven't had a chance to really sit down and just watch netflix for an entire day yet but <laughs> it's on my, it's on my two and a half years of, of reading about healthcare and writing about healthcare. I, yep. You know, I deserve one day of watching Netflix the entire day. For sure. For sure. Remind, I, remind us again, what you got your, what you got your master's degree in? Uh, healthcare administration. I, I healthcare from, administration. Yeah. I, I just graduated from George Mason university. It's in Fairfax, Virginia. Okay. And so I, I'm amped. <laughs> I did, <laughs> I, I tell everyone, I'm like, I'm done with school. I can do everything now. I can, <laughs> <laughs> Love it, man. Two hours if I need to. Like, you know, it's just, I, I've been telling everyone I'm amped. So, <laughs> dude, that, dude, that's awesome. Okay. So, so let's, let's, uh, so you're, you're done with school. You know, you're really looking forward to, you know, you know, sitting back, kicking the feet up, you know, binge watching on Netflix. 
what, you know, <laughs> what, what's, uh, what's going to be the, uh, what's going to be the show or shows that, uh, that you binge watch on Netflix when you get the chance finally. Well, it's actually Disney Plus, but my sister and I—oh, that too. <laughs> uh, my, my sister's boyfriend was in the Navy, and when he was deployed, gave her a list of movies to watch. And so we watched every Marvel movie. There's like 23 or 24 of them. Yeah. And um, I usually hate Marvel movies, or not Marvel, but just like action movies. But they put audio description on all of them on Disney Plus. Oh, nice. So oh, cool. Audio description. I am 100 percent in. And so we watched every single one of those movies. And now we got—they uh, have WandaVision, Iron Falcon, Winter Soldier, and Loki that I need to go crush because I've been, my sister, she moved to Tennessee with her boyfriend when he got out of the Navy. And so um, I was like, I can't watch any TV shows until I'm done with school. And so I was was like, you got to wait for me, but she actually already started, but that's all good. (laughs) But (laughs) I want to binge watch those shows. I I'm addicted now the way that um, I wasn't really big into Marvel, but then they kind of, the way the movies are all interlinked is just so good. So I, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm like, uh, I'm excited to watch all these shows. <laughs> nice, nice, man. Uh, or am I, or it sticks in my mind. Are you, are you, a, are you like a, a gamer as well? No, I wish. I used to be when I was growing up. I, yeah. My, my RP got just too worried, too bad. Or it's just trying to, <laughs> trying to focus on like playing Madden. It's too hard to see. And I'm just throwing interceptions every time. So I just kind of got over it. <laughs> uh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. I used to be gotcha. <laughs> Okay, okay. What uh, what, what gaming console were you uh, were you the biggest fan of when you when you were into into gaming? Well, we whenever I was like fifteen or now I was like fourteen. My mom got my mom and dad got us a um, PlayStation two, and then when I was fifteen, I started working. I bought a PlayStation three, okay. and then when I was like twenty one or no, I was probably like nineteen. I bought a PlayStation four, and so I rocked that. And then, funny enough, I I used the PlayStation or no. Yeah, PlayStation 4. I had it forever. My sister actually still uses it. She, she uses it for like uh, watching Netflix and stuff. <laughs> so okay. it's, it's funny because like it's just, I thought it was like long gone. Someone sold it or recycled it. Who knows? But then she moved in with me in October into my spare bedroom. And I was like, oh my goodness, you really still have this PlayStation 4 that's like eight years old. <laughs> it was fantastic. Oh, <laughs> dude, that's, dude, that's. <laughs> Man, at least it's still getting used, right? That's what I said. I was like, she was like, do you want it back? I'm like, no, like, I, I don't, I don't oh, know. Just... Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh, man. Crazy, crazy stuff. Um, yeah. So, so I, I heard that you've got a, uh, you've got a nickname. Um, and I, I want to hear about this. Uh, okay. is, is it Calzone or Calzoni or like, where, where, where'd that come from? Well, so there was, we were at the world championships in 2018 and I love pizza. I've never really had bad pizza in my life. So it's, yeah. and so someone said something about like, dude, you should be like the calzone because you love pizza, like a calzone, but also (laughs) because you're cow and you're in the zone. (laughs) Ah. And so I've just always got, you know, I, I dig it. Right. It's a cool nickname. And so I do love pizza. (laughs) Yeah. I, I like it. I think it's a cool nickname. And so. I, I just Love always it. rocked it and you know nicknames are only a nickname if other people come up with them you can't come up with your own nickname and so I kind of just roll with it <laughs> for, sure, for sure man for sure I, I, well, I mean okay like we, we gotta we got we gotta talk about this what kind of well you know what's uh what's the favorite kind of pizza what's your favorite like pizza you know, where where do you, where is the best pizza so some of like the, so in the midwest they have a uh, like pizza franchise called Jets and okay. It's fantastic. They do like a Detroit style, which is like in between deep dish and normal. It's mm-hmm. it's called Detroit style, but like the, the crust is caramelized and uh, it's fantastic. Like it is so okay. good. But unfortunately, the Jets in Fort Wayne closed because of COVID. Oh. And so I haven't had that. I haven't gotten, I don't know the last time I even had pizza, to be honest with you. Like we, I've been trying to, just, you know, with kicking back and meeting out of school, we also have just been training nonstop and I've been trying to eat just extraordinarily healthy just to put myself in the best situation, but for sure. I honestly couldn't tell you last time I had pizza. Oh. <laughs> it's well, so I, good. I, I love like Chicago style deep dish and like the, okay. um, I think it's like Giordani's Giordano's or whatever. I, I think that's close to the name, but <laughs> yeah, something like that. It's like the famous Chicago place, but their deep dish is so good. Yeah, for sure, man. Oh man. Got my mouth watering. 
it's 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 lunch. It, it's uh, it's coming up on my lunch time here in Colorado. So uh, my oh, my, okay. uh, my, t- my tummy my tummy's growling now. So I think for that Cal. <laughs> uh, what what about a workout coming up soon? So I don't know if pizza would be the best uh, triathlon yeah. workout food. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're you're probably right. Maybe I'll save that for dinner. Um, <laughs> Uh, you know what? I, I take back my previous comment. Um, oh, oh, my girlfriend actually flew back on uh, Monday, and I made homemade pizza for us. I was, I was oh. thinking, when was the last time I made? So like, I made the dough and um, made everything. So you know, I was like, I just had pizza, but that—that's when I had pizza. <laughs> oh, what, what, what you, uh, what you, what you put on your homemade pizza? Uh, so we both love a lot, tons of vegetables. So we had um, freshly sliced tomatoes, mushrooms, onions. Uh, diced bell pepper and then i put a layer of pepperoni over with some mozzarella cheese so yeah it's like a loaded it's almost like it's like a deep dish it's like a lasagna pizza lasagna almost with all the toppings but it turned out really good i i'm a good cook so like that's i was like i'm done with school so i can i can make something i was like oh yeah i'm gonna make some pizza All right. Uh, I, I, I don't think you're going to uh, be uh, doing healthcare administration for, uh, for, for a post goalball career. I think, uh, I, I think, uh, Cal, you know, Calzone's pizza, you know, pizza joint or something is, uh, is in the works, man. I'm, I'm, well, I use it on my Instagram. I always do cooking with Cal. And so oh, awesome. my, my cook, I love to cook. And so well, the big thing that I've been doing for the past few months, um, my sister and I were doing it too, is um, uh, making soups in, in my pressure cooker. And you make, I have an eight quart pressure cooker. And so it's you know, like my, my next thing I want to do is jambalaya, but like we made uh, mm-hmm. clam chowder, chicken noodle soup, uh, wedding soup. And I, I love soup, but you know, it's just, you can put as much veggies as you want in it. It yeah. lasts for a while, you know, it's jambalaya sounds so good. And so I want to, I need to find a recipe and put it together. <laughs> oh, dude, jump jambalaya is so delicious, man. Uh, I, I think I'm gonna need to, uh, yeah, <laughs> post post Tokyo. I'm gonna have to book myself a trip and uh, uh, come uh, knock on your door and, uh, and uh, try some of your food, man. What what the heck, well, well, man? We have gone completely off the rails here. <laughs> it's, all, it's all good. We got talking about food. We're both athletes. Oh, I, love this, I, I, lo- I, lo- I love this, man. I love. I love. I love this. I love this. Oh man. So, I mean, obviously Paralympics, big time bucket list item. You're, yeah. you're now, a, you're now a Paralympian, but I mean, what, what's, uh, what's next, man? What, you know, like, what are, what are some other bucket list items that, um, that you're looking forward to at, at some point in your life? Um, well, one of them is seems uh, we are, but I want to get a job. <laughs> I did oh, school. come on, man. I, I, first, I've, I did four years of undergraduate school, two and a half of graduate. I, I want to get a job finally. That sounds like cool. You know, get settled down. I want to, I want to move. i um, thinking about moving to Portland, Oregon. Um, okay. In January. So, you know, just trying to get settled in life sounds like a bucket list because right now, like we're coming to the end of a chapter in my life in Tokyo and Fort Wayne just Fort Wayne, just for like living in Fort Wayne. I would come back to train yeah. frequently, but like, um, so, you know, that's like the next big bucket list thing I got to figure out is getting to my next spot in my life. So, okay. But, hey, after, I, but after Tokyo, you know, like another big bucket list, I want to go to, um, I want to go travel to Europe again. Yeah. I, I love traveling. And so like going to, I want to go to Greece and, uh, my girlfriend and I both want to go there. So nice. You know, try something like that. <laughs> okay. Awesome stuff, man. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, I mean, oh gosh, man, I, I got, I got so many questions. We can go <laughs> so many different directions. So I'm, I'm going to actually, I'm going to hit the, hit the pause button. Cause I, I'm, I'm sure that we have, uh, stirred up quite the, uh, uh, I, I'm sure everyone's brains are, are just buzzing <laughs> and, and our fans have got some awesome questions and they've been, uh, they've been bringing the heat, man the last few cool. episodes so uh i like uh, uh, whenever we did it a few months ago we didn't get it we got one viewer question so i'm excited yeah yeah <laughs> so uh yeah so uh we're gonna we're gonna toss it over to uh producer extraordinaire bill kellick uh bill what what fan questions have we uh got for for callahan so far because i mean I, I'm, I can continue on but i know the fans have got some questions yeah, Cal, we've had several uh, asking where you would rank yourself uh, as far as the uh, 
best goalball players in the world, and who do you think is the best in the world at this moment? Uh, the way that I've been playing, I'd put myself up there as one of the best in the world. Um, you know, I, I I really try to stay away from that because I don't want to be like I'm the best, and I'd rather go show show how good I am than like you know say that I'm up there. But you know, in my head, I'm up there with my throw and my defense. Um, but some of the best in the world, um, Limon Silva from uh, Brazil is fantastic. Michael from, uh, his name, Michael Dennis is Amanda Dennis's husband. Uh, he's from Germany. He's one of the best in the world. Um, you know, um, there's a guy named Ginrich from the Lithuanian team's just all good. <laughs> they have a guy named Eustace Ginrich, and uh, uh, I can't think of the third guy's name right now. I'm blanking, but you know, there's so many good players all across the world. So uh, I'd put myself in that same category, but it's hard to really rank myself. All right. Next one comes from Dan Toon and he wants to know, even though both are critical, do you get more excited about scoring goals or blocking shots? Uh, I get more excited about blocking shots because uh, you know, it's like football. Like whenever you have like a great save, sometimes, sometimes there's like big deflections in the end zone on fourth and like three, whenever you're trying to stop the other team from scoring, those are almost more exhilarating than the crazy touchdowns. And so in goal ball, like it's, it's so hard to block the ball. <laughs> like, you know, goals are going to happen, but whenever you have these crazy saves, it's, or just great saves. I, I get amps. I, you know, I, so much energy flowing from all the teammates whenever we have a collective save or we have a clean save that's important. So I almost get more energy from the defensive side of things. All right. Final question also from Dan, do you have any stories about pranks played on other players during any of your tournament experiences? Pranks pulled on my other teammates. Um, or have you had a prank pulled on you? <laughs> no, nah, never really. My one teammate, John Kusku, hates Axe body spray. And so I, I like, it's the only thing I could think of. I like said, I was like, I'm spraying your stuff with Axe body spray. And he was like freaking out from the shower room and locker room. <laughs> but like, besides that, we don't really prank each other. I don't think. That's a good uh, question. I just, we don't really prank each other very much. We might. I just don't remember. It's, I think that's more likely that <laughs> the situation. <laughs> Uh, uh there's 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 nothing wrong with uh not cranking each other but yeah you know, I, I i have a feeling uh there might be a mischievous teammate or two that that uh is watching and they're like oh man we got to come up with some so <laughs> i hope so i you know that kind of question comes up i'll be like yeah <laughs> Zach Bueller pranked everyone. <laughs> I, I, I could I could see Zach uh, pulling some pranks on, on some people. I I don't know why. He, that, that's a mischievous guy right there. <laughs> he's, so, he's so nonchalant. I, I agree with you. He would be like, <laughs> he'd be pulling some pranks. <laughs> Sleep with one eye open, Callahan. Sleep with one eye open. <laughs> so you you, uh, you you chat, you talked, uh, you know, about, you know, the, um, you just get a, a mad rush from, from blocking uh, goals, playing defense. Um, yeah. And you, and you compare and like you, you compare it a lot to, you know, to football and like getting that big deflection in the end zone. Um, are, I mean, you, uh, you're a pretty big football fan or like, what are some of your other, you know, favorite uh, professional sports uh, that you enjoy watching? So I'm a, I'm a giant Steelers fan. I'm, I'm from Pittsburgh. And so anything Pittsburgh. I love the Steelers, Pirates, and Penguins. Um, All right. So, I, you know, I, I root for my teams. The Pirates are kind of hard because they're <laughs> just <laughs> consistently kind of rough to, to, to be around. But the Penguins and the Steelers are usually pretty competitive. But I, I love football. I played football for uh, four years. I had two years in middle school and then two years in high school. So it's, I love the contact. I love the physicality and just all the different intricacies that go into it. And um, I miss the contact of it, but the goal ball is a good, you get the similar rush whenever you make these crazy blocks or, uh, you know, because whenever you're playing great defense, you kind of push the other team to make mistakes or you, they need to push the line because they're not scoring. And so they get frustrated. It's hard whenever you're one of the best throwers in the world and you're not scoring. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, it's just such an easy way to, well, not easy way. It's just a way to really put the pressure onto the other team to score. Like they're going to push the line and make mistakes and cause penalties. And so, um, that's one of the things that I love about goal ball and 
it's comparable to football in my head in that realm. But um, back to the original question, I, I love the Steelers. I die hard Steelers. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. What? What? I mean. I mean. Oh, man, like it. it <laughs> are uh, are are your Steelers gonna? Are, are they gonna? Are they gonna manage it this year, man? They have uh, a lot of tur- a lot of turnover. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's what everyone said. Everyone, you know. I was skeptical of Ben Roethlisberger coming back last year, but he looked all right. Um, yeah. Got a new offensive coordinator, got Najee Harris from uh, University of Alabama. So I'm feeling confident. We got a, uh, oh man, Pat, I can't, I can't remember his last name from Penn State. It's tight end. So, you know, I mean, we just got all these weapons on the field. And then you got TJ Watt, Mika Fitzpatrick on defense. So I'm feeling good. All right. All defense right, is one right. of the best in the league. I, you know, everyone was all hype about Bud Dupree getting to the Titans. I'm like, he had one good season out of six years. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, I mean, you did, you're a, you're a Pittsburgh dude through and through. So give us like, give us like three to five, like top must do things. If, if we, uh, if we go to Pittsburgh. Uh, so going to the point, uh, the point is where the two rivers come together and make the third river. I'm blanking on the three names right now. So <laughs> don't hold that on uh, to me. But uh, the point is like where there's a big water fountain and it's just right on the river, just people on boats everywhere. There's usually food carts. Um, that's a pretty cool part of downtown. Um, there's uh, to the left of the city, depending on how you're looking at it, but there's uh, Mount Washington, which is just almost like this hillside city and you can take this like incline up to the top and overlook the city and there's restaurants in the hillside um i'm trying to think and then i guess the food so you got to get like permani brothers uh, permani brothers is like the pittsburgh where you got coleslaw french fries and all their sandwiches and it's so good i love pittsburgh i love downtown i'm not a big fan of the winters though but <laughs> no <laughs> yeah and like all the stadiums are right next to each other well pnc park where the pirates play in Hinesville, where the steelers are at are literally right next to each other on the south side. So it's or on the north side, I mean. Um, but it's just such a cool city. It's a beautiful downtown and yep. the surrounding area is beautiful. So it's just I love it. <laughs> awesome, dude. Awesome. All right. So uh, I mean, you're gonna be in uh you're gonna be in Tokyo for you know for a couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. Uh apart from your goal ball equipment, get give us uh give us like three to five like personal items that like you're like I cannot travel <laughs> to Tokyo without these items go <laughs> <laughs> well it's hard because we get pretty much everything there like from t-shirts to underwear to socks so it's like um funny funny you ask that because my um my old coach Wendy Fagan and uh-huh. professor she, whenever we would travel to tournaments growing up, her and her daughters always pack us these goodie bags. They had like coloring books and uh, uh, snacks of just like all sorts in it. And so it was funny because when she came to my party a few weekends ago, she brought me uh-huh. a clothes hamper, probably 50 pounds <laughs> of snacks <laughs> and uh, coloring books and just stuff to do. And it was fantastic. I, I'm amped because I, we're going to find a way to bring the entire hamper. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> I joked everyone. I was like, I need help eating this food because the more, the more we eat, the more I have like space to put my dirty clothes too. So it works out well. <laughs> but, <laughs> that's, a, that's a good point. <laughs> yeah. It's, but I don't, you know, uh, it used to be my laptop and my laptop charger and wallet. Those are like my three things I always made sure because like, I can't live without those three things. Was like, yeah. like with, with school, I was like, need to have my laptop and laptop charger at all times of my existence. But now that I don't, like, I haven't been bringing a backpack in. So, like, I guess my AirPods is a definite. Like, I got to have my AirPods. Uh, okay. Some sort of sunglasses. Just, you know. Um, oh, man. Uh, <laughs> that's that's a tough one because, like, I guess my toothbrush. <laughs> <laughs> to- toothbrush charger. Like, I, I guess those, that's an important one. Like, <laughs> I'm pretty oh, easy traveler. That's my problem. It's like I, I'm so good with the flow that like if I forgot something, I'm like oh, it's you know like whatever, I'll figure it out. But yeah, I guess my phone and my AirPods are like the two big ones right now. But um, I think we're getting new phones in Tokyo, so it's even that. I'm just like man, like I don't really know where to go with that. <laughs> oh really? Wow, that's crazy, dude. Yeah. Oh man. All right, so so, so Callahan's a, a light, you know, pretty pretty easygoing traveler here. Uh, <laughs> 
Oh man. So just, just a couple, just a couple more, you know, quick little hitters, just, you know, just kind of some fun, you know, some, some fun, just a couple of fun questions. Uh, if, if you had, you know, if, uh, if we if we had a cele- if a celebrity was going to call you like as you're at, you know as you're as you're you know, waiting in line to board the plane uh going to Tokyo uh what celebrity would you most want to hear from man you're really coming at me uh <laughs> <laughs> oh man um what celebrity uh you know i i'm big in the sports and i guess the sports athletes are celebrities so like yeah you know, if, if like lebron james or like tom brady called me you know like being a pittsburgh fan i i despise the patriots but i do love tom <laughs> brady like i i respect the dude because he's so cool but like yeah. i guess if one of those two guys called me I, that would be so cool i mean you know like kind of hard to say i never thought about that before but um in terms of sports, I guess I would just stick with like LeBron James or Tom Brady because those guys are just so good at what they do and so motivating, right? So, yeah, no, that's that too. That's a, a, a I I can't I I can't fault <laughs> you for picking the for picking those guys. Uh, I, I actually just I just thought awesome. we were actually talking about this in a in a meeting we had yesterday at USABA. And, okay. uh, it's, it's something I, you know, something that just popped into my head. If you were to put together a, uh, like, let's say, let's say it's you and, you know, two celebrities, uh, yeah. on, on a goal ball team, who, who are the two celebrities that, uh, you would, you would, uh, pick to be on your team and you got to face off with the, with the rest of your, with the rest of your, uh, your, your team USA uh, team going to going to Tokyo. So you and two celebrities that have never played goal ball <laughs> uh, versus versus uh let's just say like Tyler and uh you know two of your other two of your other teammates. Okay. So I I'm thinking like Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Okay. I'm thinking of like a massive dude. <laughs> uh-huh. Um and it's funny because like uh, we were talking the other day, our, our one friend Lamar just ran a, uh, four, went on like a four mile celebrity run with Tiki Barber. And it's funny, oh. I, play, I played goal ball with Tiki Barber before. Oh, and it's really? Crazy. Well, we did a, an advertisement for Pepsi when I was like 15. And it's crazy okay. because like those guys, those professional athletes are nuts, right? Like they could just come in and just rip a goal ball. So I'm just thinking about Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Just <laughs> throwing <laughs> Tyler just... I have no clue how to do it, but yet this is bowling. I just imagine him being the kind of guy that breaks bowling pins when he bowls. Um, oh my gosh! I think of like another like uh, like a linebacker for football, right? Like yeah, maybe like maybe like a uh, like a JJ Watt or something like that. I guess. Oh <laughs> man, I, 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 of, like a beefy dude. That's I mean, those linebackers in football are just crazy athletic. Yeah. Just thinking about like Rock Dwayne the Rock Johnson and TJ JJ Watt. Like I'll go I'll go TJ Watt because he's a stealer, but <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. So 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 we got so we got Callahan Young, Dwayne the Rock Johnson, and and TJ Watt on uh, on on uh, on one side of the uh, on one side of the court. Hey, that's uh, I, I don't want to face that team. <laughs> <laughs> like we're all tall. Dwayne and TJ are crazy big. Yeah, so, you know, I I feel like we could do some damage. <laughs> okay, man, I like it. I like it. <laughs> all right, all right, man. Just uh, just one final. Let, let's just uh, let's one final question. Let's circle it back. Bring it back to uh, bring it back to Tokyo, um, okay. a little bit. Um, you got, uh, you know, this is a, this is gonna be a tough. Uh, this is gonna be a tough tournament. Yeah. So uh, just just tell us real quickly, um, you know, I, I we all know that, you know, it's it's a gold medal mindset on, on Team USA. Mm-hmm. So who are your uh, who are your two? Who, who are the two teams that are that are, you know, standing in uh, uh, you know, that you feel are standing in the way of uh, of us bringing home that that shiny gold medal? You know, the two teams that we've always had struggles with have been um, Brazil, Germany. Um, 
Well, Germany have only played once, but just more recently, like uh, Brazil and Lithuania have been the two biggest teams we've always struggled with. And um, coming out of the Lithuanian tournament where we beat them in the gold medal game, you know, we have a lot of confidence in ourselves right now. Yeah. So just, I think if we can get past those teams, we will get past like that mental block that we've been having. Yeah. And just, uh, you know, I think our biggest opponent is ourselves. I, I think we're that good of a team that if we can just rein ourselves in and be like a hundred percent focused on the, on the prize on the gold medal, I, I do believe in us to win that gold medal. It's not just like, Oh, I, I think we can win just because we're, you know, <laughs> but I, I think we're just that good of a team that, that we're underrated and we're going to come into the games, you know, swinging away. For sure. I love it, dude. Mic drop. I love it guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, Cal, we could, I mean, dude, we, I mean, we could, uh, I, I have a feeling you're going to be back on here at some point. Cause we could just, I mean, we could just talk forever about, you know, yeah, this, you, that, or the other. <laughs> I got to get back on here so we can, you can tell me more about how I can train for my Ironman in October. <laughs> oh yeah, man. We gotta, we, we gotta, we gotta talk about that. <laughs> Yeah, we got it. We got it. We got to chat. We got to chat about that. You know, I, I got to shoot you a text message here. And uh, my, mom, <laughs> in a my mom keeps being like, are you ready for this? I'm like, mom, I don't have a tandem bike. I don't have a guide. I don't have a wet <laughs> for swimming. Yeah, uh, like, I guess I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I did my I did my first uh, triathlon with barely any uh, preparation. Ah, you'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, right. I'll have some goo, goo tablets, you know, like the honey there you go. Easter, uh, stuff, you know, like. We'll figure it out as we go. Yeah, that's 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 the that's the best kind of plan. Make it up as you go along. <laughs> I hope right. they all finish before they uh before they shut down the entire setup. But <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, we're I I uh, I can promise you, we'll definitely have you back. Oh, you're just uh you're you're a fun fun dude to uh to have on. And man, it's been uh it's been it's been it's been real, and it and it has been real fun, man. Uh, yeah. so I just want to, you know, just from, you know, from, you know, I just want to personally wish you luck and, um, you know, you know, I know the entire USABA fan base, you know, the entire USABA family, uh, we want to wish, you know, you Callahan young, the best of luck, uh, go ahead and, g- and give, uh, give the listeners just, um, uh, you know, give them again, if, if they haven't followed you already on, uh, on the social media channels, give them uh, how to, to follow, uh, you and, and keep up with uh, your journey uh, to Tokyo and uh, and beyond. Uh, well, first off, I appreciate it. I appreciate the good luck, and same to you. Uh, you know, it's your first Paralympics as well, so best of luck to you. And thanks you so much for Thanks, having man. me on. I, I love being on. It's, a, it's such a fun, it's a cool podcast to be on. <laughs> yeah, man, uh, for sure. But you know, my my, you can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. It's all my name is Callahan Young. It's at Callahan Young on both Instagram and Twitter, and um, follow the USA Men's Goalball page at USA M Goalball, and same with Twitter. And on Facebook, it's USA Men's Goalball. And then for the women's, their Instagram and Twitter is USA W Goalball, and their Facebook is USA Women's Goalball. So go follow all of those. Keep in touch and. Um, follow our journey in Tokyo where we cannot wait. Awesome stuff, man. All right, you guys, we have come to the close of yet another blind spot where we talk with blind athletes reaching excellence. You guys, we've been uh, highlighting and, and featuring our, our, our men's and women's uh, Paralympic uh, goalball athletes the last few weeks. We still got a couple more weeks to go. We've got a few more athletes to chat with, and uh, I'm just getting more and more amped up uh, for for Tokyo. And I know you guys are too. Uh, so you guys give uh, give Callahan a follow on the social media channels. Give the USA men's and women's goalball teams uh, a follow on the social media channels. Uh, as always, guys, you know keep keep tuned to uh, the USABA. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube channels, all of that um, as we're pushing out content left and right um, as we get closer and closer to, to Tokyo, uh, in addition to being our 45th anniversary. Uh, so guys, as always, I'm Kyle Kuhn. My guest today has been Mr. Callahan Young. Cal, best of luck in Tokyo. Congratulations on your first uh, first Paralympics. And uh, man, we'll... Uh, I look forward to uh, look forward to uh, hearing all about 
uh, the experience uh, later on, man. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me on and good luck to yourself, man. I'm excited for you as well. So awesome. I appreciate that, man. All right, guys, that's it. That's it for today. We'll be back on, I believe we're back on Tuesday, uh, but we will definitely uh, let you guys know the date and time and our next guest uh, coming up in the next uh, couple of days. Uh, but stay tuned. We've got more of our uh, Paralympic goalball team athletes coming up next week. So until then, you all keep reaching for your own excellence. See you later.